Hey, Dino fans, I'm giving away two $100 Universal Studios gift cards with a fun new giveaway featuring my new favorite mobile game, Jurassic World Alive. It has been so much fun running around my neighborhood, searching for all kinds of new dinosaurs to collect and battle. You should see me with my drone, guys. I'm really, really great. Oh, got a direct hit right at the end. Yeah. Not to mention my amazing Laugh Pack Alliance with all of the raids we've been doing. If you want to win one of the two Universal Studios gift cards, simply download the game using my link here, reach level five, screenshot your game, and tag me here on Instagram with that screenshot. And here's something really cool. If we get a thousand downloads of the game, I'm allowed to double the giveaway and make it $400 worth of Universal Studios gift cards. So good luck out there dino hunting. I can't wait to see your screenshots. When you think about Universal Studios theme parks, you don't usually think about parades. As a whole, the parks in America have been more focused on presenting themselves as a functional studio. And the only parades that really went through them were tram tours that ran regularly. But none of that matters where we're going. Where everything theme parks is better. Where popcorn buckets are made of gold. That's right, Japan. Allow me to introduce to you the most epic nighttime parade show that you've seen since Paint the Night. Universal Studios Japan Spectacle Night Parade, the best of Hollywood. That's a long title. Rolls right off the tongue. But you know what? Don't let the title fool you. This parade is out of control. The parade debuted in May of 2018 and featured over 100 performers in a 600 meter long route. And this parade has everything. Harry Potter, Jurassic World, Transformers, Minions. What more could you possibly want? Right off the bat, we jump right into it with a large parade float that just says the, the name of the show, the best of Hollywood. American cinema is a novelty, and now we're celebrating it in the form of a parade. Now this collection of costumes is a little confusing. What, what are they dressed up as? It's like a movie theater that has a marching band. It's a little weird, it's a little weird. But here's something interesting about these costumes. Because this is a nighttime show and Universal Studios doesn't normally do parades, the park isn't designed with parade lighting. So this show specifically features unique lighting found in all of the costuming to light the characters and floats in ways that like you just haven't even seen before. The first unit of this parade is truly the star, the hero of the show, Harry Potter. The first segment is full of platform nine and three quarters visitors, bunch of wizard kids at the train station with their trolleys, with animatronic owls and these beautiful little lanterns. I mean, come on, this is gorgeous. This is essentially Potter the Night. <laughs> It's gorgeous. It really honestly is a gorgeous. I would ride this train and listen to sick lo-fi beats all day long. Look at this glowing train. It's it's absolutely incredible. Oh, ho, ho, but what's this? A little trick up the parade sleeve? Is that projection mapping I see surrounding the parade route on both sides? Now listen, the projection mapping in this parade is super cool, but it really depends on where you're sitting to get your bang for your buck, all right? One side of the street is a, a city facade, and the other side of the street is just a movie theater screen. It's just a huge blank white wall. It's beautiful to project on. So the projections can get a little muddy depending on the, uh, the type of scene and which side you're sitting at. I'd recommend if you ever see this parade to sit in a place where you get that big studio screen wall. It's a big, beautiful movie screen. So here comes the projection map Dementors and uh, a third train car rolls in off of this train float. And what's that? It's filled with students. That's incredible. Now, what's I, what I love about this is that there are no recognizable faces. There are no wizards on this float that we've seen in the movies. These are just a new group of kids on their way to Hogwarts interacting with a Dementor that's terrorizing the train. Universal loves to scream. And you know what? This parade is full of them and they work. This, this, this whole segment's giving me crazy Mickey Runaway Railway flashbacks. It's like goofy Dementors. It's like, oh gosh, goofy Dementor here. Just checking for evil souls. Uh, let me just taste yours real quick. Oh, <laughs> yuck. <laughs> 
This segment sets off a story beat for this entire Harry Potter unit. There's an evil force that moves in and the children together have to work as a team to vanquish it. On the front end, it's Dementors and on the back end, it's Death Eaters. We get an amazing float that is the Quidditch pitch. It's got three floating flying wizards decked out in flight gear, what? Although the more I watch it, it's kind of weird. It's like a broom mechanical bull. It's like a wizard's mechanical bull. <laughs> Who can stay on the broom the longest? <laughs> a quick break in the action with a unit that's comprised of the house banners from the Hogwarts school. I love these, they're gorgeous. They're just, they're beautiful. I mean, like park them around my house. Like have them be like, like hedge decorations. This is, I'm, all, I'm here for this, I'm here for this. The final float of this unit is incredible. It features a group of students in the Room of Requirement actually battling a horde of Death Eaters. There are real wands being used, casting real spells with a lot of beautifully timed choreography, and the kids beat the, the Death Eaters and they vanquish off of the float. It's, it's, it's incredible magic that's used throughout this whole unit. I, I, I'm just thrilled, I'm just, I'm just left speechless. It's just amazing. That's, that's easy, dude. It's Lumos. Lumos Maxima, man. Got the sweats in here because we Lumos Maxima. <laughs> Got the wizard sweats. This is a wizard, Dab. This is a human. <laughs> the next segment's weird. Real weird. It's like if you played laser tag with mall Santa Transformers. It's really the only way to describe it. First off, what, what type of infancy training were these soldiers given? They're literally wearing glow plates on their chest, the most vulnerable area. Is this a bizarre universe where bulletproof vests glow in the dark? Their weapons have real firing effects. And interestingly enough, these aren't the only <laughs> weapons that are in this parade, but don't worry, we'll get to the minions soon enough. The projection mapping here, guys, is wild, real wild. We've got like a dune sandworm eating video game buildings on the side of a studio. It's a, uh, it's a choice. It, uh, you know what though? This is the only time I would say sitting on the other side of the route where you could see the buildings would be the, the, the scene to see it in. Cause at least now the, the sand dune mech worm thing is eating the pretend build. I, I, this is a choice. The transformers look good. They look good, but they are so static and chompy. So, you know, Bumblebee looks like a mall Santa baby. He's just, he's just, as, he's just, it's a small world in it. He's only got two ranges of motion and it's this, it's this, you know, but it looks good. It looks good. It looks good. What, what city is this? Is that Big Ben? Does that say Chicago? Aren't we in Japan? I think I live in Pennsylvania. What I love about this float is Megatron can really only do like one move, one move. And that's just a rock and sock em robot, that, that big Ben tower. He's really giving it to it. And then eventually the tower breaks. That's cool. It's very like a uh, earthquake, you know, it's like you see it and you're like, oh, that's gonna break. And then it does and you're like, oh, I knew it. Optimus Prime rolls in and uh, I have mixed feelings because first off, it looks super cool when he's transforming. But as soon as the smoke clears, whew, things fall apart real fast. He's essentially just scaffolding with a couple of jumbotrons strapped to him. And it's all, it's all screens? Sc screens universal? Screens universal? We now have foldable phones. This doesn't do anything for me. All right, I'm over this. All right, foldable screens, pfft, so what? I want a real transformer. Next, Jurassic World. Boy, the Jurassic World float section is kind of impressive. Here's why. It consists of floats that actually operate as moving zoo enclosures for human college kids dressed as dinosaurs. That's groundbreaking. Look at this float. That's a dinosaur, that's fake. But then that, that dinosaur, that's a kid dressed as a dinosaur. We're keeping a lot of caged up dino kids. These gyrospheres are so cool looking. Could you even imagine the cash Universal could print if they had some kind of people mover attraction that put you in a gyrosphere that allowed you to control which direction you looked and took you on a predetermined path through all kinds of jungle fun. Man, cash, printing cash would be so cool. I would ride it all day. 
Up next is a whole unit of dino breeders. These are some real weird folks, all right? You you know them. You all had the reptile friend in high school, right? It's like the guy who had too many lizards. This is them, all grown up. Then a huge cage rolls in full of four dinosaurs accompanied by a famous actor slowly falling from the public's grace. It's me, Mario. Do you think that these dinosaurs are gonna break out of here? I don't know, I'm a little suspicious. Oh, what's that? They are! Oh, thank God Chris Pratt is here too, because guess what? They're not animatronics. They're college kids dressed as dinosaurs and they're escaping. They've escaped, they've escaped. No, seriously though, stop. This is actually some really cool storytelling in a parade. Could you imagine a parade rolling by telling stories like dinosaurs escaping? That's some immersive storytelling. Hey, have you noticed all them projection map bushes in the background and those little tiny T-Rex heads popping out awkwardly like Homer Simpson in the bushes? Well, they've been teasing the king, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and boy, this is cool, man. Uh, the T-Rex just rolls up with all of his bush buddies and uh, he's, he, it's, it, there it is. There's a T-Rex parade float. Look, Universal's known for slamming and smashing dinosaur animatronics every time. This T-Rex has been iconic for decades. And now this is how they plus it up. This is how they want it up. A dinosaur roaming the streets of the parks. Sold. Oh man, the minions. The Minions. Love them or hate them. Let me guess, if you love them, you probably also love Stitch too. But this final section of the parade is legitimately amazing. These parade floats are bright, vibrant, and gorgeous. Plus, finally, the projection mapping now really is stunning. Look at the projection mapping that surrounds this whole segment. I feel like we're in a non-stop party. I love this vibe. The first unit has gotta be a medley of locations from the Minion films, right? I mean, look, they got like Egypt, there's some more towers. I mean, we got we got a lot of we got a lot of clock towers in this parade. This is a very clock tower heavy parade. All right, I am. I don't know. Is there like a Costco of clock tower parade floats that I'm unaware of? Because they must have gotten them wholesale. The minions on these floats are actually really cool. They're like puppets. They're little puppets controlled by team members inside. You can kind of notice how they're how they bounce and how their arms move. That's not anything that's done animatronically. That is definitely live controlled by performers inside the parade units. That's pretty common though for Universal to use puppets in their parades. Check out the Secret Life of Pets. Those are all puppets. Then we get likely the most magical scene in the entire parade. Wow. Look at these minion outfits. They are fantastic. And what's that? Uh, a minion with a firearm? This is some bizarre minion color guard. I'm here for it. I, you know, minions are great cheerleaders and uh, I, have, I have nothing but praise for this entire segment. Why are the minions so heavily armed for like a glow disco war? Like, what, what are they expecting to happen? Just dance, just dance. <laughs> Then we round out the parade with a whole Despicable Me tribute. This last float is very Despicable Me in the whole amusement park, fluffy unicorn segment of the movie. I love this float, man. It's so, it's so trippy, it's so radical. Check out all these colors and lines. Also, I love all the little animatronic minions like the one that's riding the roller coaster car. That's cool. Then we roll into the finale, the Minion Beach Disco Super Party. The use of lights on these dancers is incredibly sharp. Just look at all those glowing inner tubes and what are those, banana shorts? The last float is honestly just minion heaven, isn't it? I mean, it's just like a like an eternal party full of bananas at the beach. It's, it's minion heaven, it's minion heaven. And then finally, uh, they're back. The movie theater marching band is back. These are the people that have to clean up the theater after you leave. That Reese's Pieces bag and that empty bucket of popcorn, that hot dog wrapper. These are the fine women who have to clean it up. You understand? Throw away your garbage. That's all I'm saying. Think of the, think of the movie theater marching band. Boy, this has been an epic parade from Universal Studios Japan. I'm I'm actually blown away. Universal has a lot of potential for some really amazing nighttime shows and they're coming. They're absolutely coming. So just, you know, buckle up because what Universal's gonna start delivering to us here in the domestic parks is gonna be uh, just 
bonkers, just absolutely bonkers. I really loved this play on the Paint the Night electric neon pop music celebration. I, I was absolutely here for it. It's, it's really cool. Has have any of you guys been to Universal Studios Japan? Let me know in the comments below. I wanna hear, I wanna hear the stories or hit me up over on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Patreon. I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. I wanna hear all the stories. Send me the pictures. I wanna, I wanna know if you had a lot of fun, what souvenirs did you get? I really appreciate all you guys watching. Really, really, really seriously. Every like, every watch, every subscribe, every bell ring means the world to me. Really appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. And as always, you rock.